part six from chapter 11, we're going to look at Gregor Mendel, who is actually the father of modern genetics. And it's from his work we get the things like dominant, recessive, punnett squares, etc. So without further ado, let's get down to business. As I said earlier, Gregor Mendel is the father of genetics, and he did his work in kind of an interesting time in, in history. So let's jot some stuff down here, okay? He's an Austrian monk, okay? Uh, he basically kind of works at a, a, like what you would call it, consider today a Catholic high school. And he is a kind of a math and science teacher. So he, he kind of gets science. He understands the scientific method. And so one of his jobs as a monk is he has to tend to a pea garden. Or I'm sorry, he tends to a garden, and in his garden he's grown peas. So I want you to focus over here on this picture. Okay? So here's a picture of Mendel, and he's tending to the peas that are in his garden. And he noticed some things. You know, just being a scientist, he's very observant. He sees things out in the world. And he noticed that, huh. Some of my pea plants go really, really tall, but some of them are short. And some of them have white flowers, but others are like purple. And, and some of the flowers, they're kind of in the middle of the stem, like you see over here. And some of them are at the end of the stem. And so he's kind of like, huh, wonder why this happens. So he runs a few experiments to figure out why this is happening. And this is where we get his discovery of of genetics, of what we call genetics. He didn't quite have a term for that. He just knew there was something being inherited between them. Okay, now what's interesting, he does his work kind of in the 1860s. This is kind of the same time where Charles Darwin is giving his, uh, his presentation of his theory of evolution. And nobody makes the connection between what Darwin is saying and what Mendel is saying because the two really fit together. Because Darwin knew that something was being passed from parent to offspring, he didn't know what. And Gregor Mendel kind of had that, that, that answer. Now, Mendel's work really didn't get discovered until right around 1900. So there was a couple decades lapse between Mendel's work really coming to the forefront and from when he presented it. All right, so let's look at what Mendel, what he looked at. All right, so here are some of the P traits that he saw. And over here on this uh, left-hand column, this would be the dominant traits, and over here will be recessive. Now, if you do not know what dominant and recessive mean, that's coming up in the next uh, uh, series of next screencast, which would be part seven. Okay, so sometimes this is referred to as smooth, so the seed shape would be smooth, and sometimes instead of being called or dented, this is called wrinkled, and we'll use these two terms most of the time. Okay, now believe it or not. In pea plants, the yellow color is the dominant trait over green. But just because you're dominant doesn't mean that's the most common allele. Okay? Purple is dominant over white. An inflated pod shape is dominant over restricted. Green pods are dominant over yellow. And then here we got your, your flower position. Axial, which means in the middle. And terminal means at the end. All right, So think of axial as middle. Well, nice spelling middle, and terminal would mean at the end. Okay, now once again, dominant over here, recessive over there. And then tall is dominant over dwarf, which we'll typically refer to as short. Okay, so these are some of the, the traits from the pea plant that we're going to be using in some of our genetics problem. Okay, now this episode is really short and sweet. The next episode, part seven, is over Mendelian vocabulary. You must absolutely positively master the next episode because you need to know what all these words mean in order to do these genetic problems correctly. So until episode number seven, we're going to catch you on the flip side.